There we go. So now that at least mean that I won't forget it later on. 1002. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So Ned, how's your mouth, your teeth? How are your teeth doing, Ned? Good. <laughs> Thank you. I know. <laughs> Um, I wish I hadn't had to go back for another hour and a half of stuff, but it's all done. Good. Good. Really a rather horrible experience to have your temporary crown come off in the middle of dinner. We were, oh, no. Mother's Day, we were at this beautiful place sitting mm. right next to a window, my wife and I on Mother's Day. Um sitting next to a window that showed a panoramic view of north and uh, eastern and a little bit of southern um, Orange County. Beautiful. And I bit down and I heard this great crunch. And I thought, oh, no. And so I ran to the bathroom with my napkin. And there was, you know, I, I just put it all out there. In the napkin. Couldn't find much. Went to the doctors and he said, I thought I'd broken my tooth and the temporary cap, but no, just one side of the cap, which just exposed uh, the cape, uh, what the the hole in my mm. mold. And uh, look, and uh, he took me the very next day and fixed it. Very apologetic. I figured I was supposed to apologize because I'm the guy that bit so hard. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's over. Thank you. Go ahead. And, and besides your tooth, Ned, how are you? I'm good. You, Thank you. You have done your person service for the rest of us in representing and being there and keeping us in touch. You were very close to the source of, of the whole grief and grieving process. So I've been thinking about you during the week as well as the rest of the family and what kind of wonder how they're doing and I really appreciate that it it was it, it was harder than I thought it would be in lots of ways in other ways it wasn't as hard uh Betty uh is rallying just getting all kinds of stuff done um she's really the person that's um guiding all of these little pieces that need to be tended to uh, when we want a really good service. Yes. Can't hear you, Tim. No, my dog was on the bed just screwing around. That's all. Oh, that's why you were smiling. <laughs> no. Um, How about John and Susan? Um, John is not well. John took it really hard. Um, He's not saying much. He's kind of staying in the background in a corner somewhere. I had a very long conversation with him. And there's lots of uh, stuff that's going on uh, with him. Susan is, you know, with she stays with uh, Betty. And they together do what needs to be done. Did you guys get that, uh, that card, a uh, little long yeah. card? Yeah, I sure. did. Uh, yes, that, thank you. That and was... actually, when, with my hyper-vigilant proofreading eyes, there <laughs> is one problem. Did you catch it? I, I have not. I just saw it and shot it out to everybody. It, said, it used the word internment rather than interment. Uh, oh. Which is a very common mistake, but, you it's... know. Yeah, you, you lawyer, heard, lawyer, uh, lawyers you, and, and doctors should know uh should know the difference. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, a friend of Susan's did that. Uh, I think it was a friend of Susan's and it looked great. Uh you know, even pe people even say interment. They do all the time. And yeah. now you wonder if if they come back to life and they're working in a hospital. Hey Frank. Hi. Hi, Ned. Hi, Frank. This Norman has been in and out. Senor Corbachi. 
I, for and some reason, my video is not working right. <clears throat> I've, uh, this is Bob. I've had a, a power thing interruption. And so I was out after I had asked Ned for, you know, how everything was going. I'll catch up on the on the video later on on that section. But things are coming along very, very nicely. Uh, 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 students that we had at Salesian High School in Boston. Oil Heights in Los Angeles, you know the 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 scrabbly part of uh, of Los An one of them uh, of Los Angeles, where Salesian High School is, um, graduated many uh, students that knew George. Many he was there, I think seven years, and I was there three. Um, and uh, the kind of leader of them all, acknowledged leader, uh, uh, young. Wow, I'm not so sure he's so young any longer. Um, lawyer uh, who graduated from Salesian, who was particularly close to George and to me, but but very much close to George, uh, uh, has decided to disseminate all of the information that he can and and uh, make sure that all of the guys that knew George and whom George touched. Um, which he did that, I mean, for, for, for many of those guys. This one in particular uh, went to Yale undergrad and Yale Law and is a very, very successful lawyer. And he still has the East LA, um, you know, the, the <laughs> accent. And he talks like that, but he's funny and he's smarter than hell and has done extremely well. Um, uh, Alfredo Alvarado, uh, no, Alfredo, I'm sorry, Alberto Alvarado is his name, um, and he's going to bring lots of folks. Uh, um, it, it, and and uh, the music, I think, is coming along as well as it can. Betty and I are going to sing the first uh, hymn, the entrance hymn, Pescador de Hombres, which we sang uh, on Wednesday, uh, two Wednesdays ago. Uh, one of George's very favorite song, uh, hymns. Um, uh, Bishop Barnes is going to do the homily uh, after after a lot of struggle to get him to do after it. A he, lot of process there. <laughs> yeah. He did yeoman's uh, he, work there. <laughs> yeah, he just told me that yesterday. Just yet, well, I guess I'll do it then. <laughs> and we we vetted a whole bunch of people, you know. And anyway, uh, there will be. Uh, Tom and, and Norm and uh, I hope Barney Gatlin uh, Norm's trying to get a hold of him um, uh, possibly Paul Dotson Gary Lombardi will be there to come celebrate now why uh, is Paul Paul is an if he's an if only because he's got a similar situation as we had with George uh in France, of all places, he's got a brother-in-law that's um, failing, and he's going to be there planned uh, for a while. Uh, but he he's uh, trying to make, and I, I I think he'll succeed. Trying to make arrangements to get back on time for the mass, um, so he hopefully will be there too. Parker Sandoval will be con celebrating. Um, uh, who is that, Norm? I mean, Ned, who is that? I'm not familiar with that name. Yeah. He's a young he's a very... priest. Oh, go ahead, Norm. Yeah, he's a young priest. He works in the diocese and offices. Very, very sharp. Very sharp. Mm -hmm. He he was first uh, assigned to one of our classmates, whom I spoke with on the phone, uh, John Moretta. Yeah. He was John Moretta. He has been at the same parish as pastor I think 50 years, oh. um, uh, Sacred Heart Church in East Los Angeles. I mean, he's he's in the core the, of it. The Resurrection Church. In I'm sorry. Angeles. Resurrection. Yeah. It, Norm, it's been about 40 you know, years. You should know. You, you I was there also. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and you uh, and uh, Al Kroll uh, were the witnesses for Darlene's and my marriage. Uh, which I remember so fondly. Um, anyway, it, it is coming along very well. Um, there will be three eulogies 
at the end of mass, uh, uh, Alberto Alvarado, um, one of his partners, um, Bob Kerr, and myself, but we've been given five minutes each. Wow. <laughs> so how do you do a, a eulogy in five minutes? I, I, I would call it more of a reflection, you know. Uh, yeah. But hmm? I don't so, have the information yet on where and when the funeral service is. You're kidding. I sent it to you, Norm. It just came uh, out. Yeah, it was just Norm. It's just uh, there this morning, Norm. Oh, okay, no wonder. Over overnight, I found it <clears throat> first thing this morning. Oh, okay, I'll look for it. Good. Uh, was uh, that an email or a text? What was it? Well, I, I I've sent it in. An I think. I think three different ways, but you know, sometimes you, when you're in a fog. Um, I got him. I got him, Ned. Oh, good, great, yeah. Frank. I got I got <laughs> one as a regular. And then I got one with an attachment that had the formally printed outline of everything that's going to happen. Great, wonderful. Um, I didn't yeah. get one. Uh, Tim, you didn't get one at all. I no. know that I, I was going to comment on that also. Um, Tim's name was not on the send list. Holy that, moly! That you send it to. So I'll get it. I'll get it right to you, Tim. Uh, that's I, okay. I, Thanks, Ned. Three times I, I sent it to our Fratelli, and I probably, you know, screwed up with one or two uh, in addressing it. Normally, all I do is take one of uh, Tom's uh, messages to us, copy all of the stuff, and then take mine out and shoot every, you know. Well, I know. never, 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 never miss Tim Almy. <laughs> so I don't know what happened. Show you. But, uh, that shows you how... Right. How weird uh, I'm it's, behaving. It's, Tim, it's I'm the cloud. Forward, it's the I'm cloud hanging over North right Carolina. Now. Thanks, Thomas. There Thank you go. You. It, it's uh, the cloud hanging over North Carolina, says we, Frank. And I we, won't talk about, <laughs> we won't talk about any of those other clouds. <laughs> yeah, oh, right. Was that cloud or cloud? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here it comes. Um, anyway, I got it. Well, one other thing that would be nice to have is um, now is is Bishop Barnes Betty's brother? Yes. Okay. And can can I get Betty's address so I can write her a note? Of course. Yeah. Uh, could could you send that to all of us, Ned? Please. Very good idea, Frank. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, make, I don't think I got that. So make sure to put my my, my name on the list. Sure, Bob. I I know I put your name on at least one, if not three, of uh, the the. Yeah, your name is on it, Bob. It was um, sent by Ned. Yes. Yeah. Now, now, TV Dodd. Bano at oh, gmail dot com. I not sure I used the gmail dot com. Right. Yeah, you did. And guys. Uh, the the, mas the master list that yeah. Tom prepared dated October fifth of of last year is it, you'll find back in your mailbox in October has everything you could want and maybe even some things you didn't want I don't know <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but it what? doesn't have Frank Daly's uh, new address so I need to get that from you Frank yeah yeah and, 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 uh, I, I I'll send you an a note, Tom, with just yeah. the single address rather than the yeah. other two. Yeah, we, so, so we, so I'm elusive. I'm, would you do the same for me, Frank? Um, I, yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, so, no, no, so let, let me, add, no, no. Let me review. So, Betty's okay, so, address you, you guys want, and, yeah. and what else? Uh, the list. Um, I mean, the. Uh, I'm going to ascend anew all of the information about when where mm -hmm. etc yeah that'll help because i can't find it hey norman okay. yes sir <laughs> working thank you hope it stays i i know falling apart and so oh, may i ask this ned yes. um it's dancing you know, around a little bit norm uh 
a whole lot actually <laughs> maybe a whole lot yeah who who is reaching Aaron out to, i'm sorry i'm sorry who is reaching out to people like al i mean other longtime classmates a known um, caller someone's I, on there i i'm trying to do that i i've talked with bob um uh, davis um i'd like to talk with al uh I'm not sure I've got his his uh, particulars. Um, uh, talked with uh, well, of corresponded corresponded with Paul Dotson. Um, oh, I'm I'm hoping that, that Norm uh, and or Paul no uh, John John's really our point guy for all of our classmates to the extent that there's any information on them. Um, so what do you think, John? <laughs> Johnny, have you reached out to former classmates, John Grammer? Just a couple of phone calls, but I, I haven't made any broad. Ted, how? Because no, I know, I know you've got the most unbelievable e email list going in human history. I just wondered if you'd use that to tell people about George's death. I'm going to make a note on that. Just a thought. I'm not. No, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good thought. Uh, right. I, I received a, a message from Tom Cotton, who is the titular head of this wide uh, number uh, of, or large number of uh, seminarians, uh, mostly guys that were ahead of us in the seminary, but including a, a bunch of others uh, that, that were with us. John, I think you're you're an active member of the LA Sims, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I sent him the information and he's spreading it. He uh, did acknowledge that. Thank you. Yeah. Um he asked he, he mentioned that a lot of our guys are disabled now. Wheelchairs, uh bedridden, uh, etc. And so he's very interested in uh seeing what can be done to stream the mass. And as Tom, I'm sure, can tell you, uh, he did a, a good uh, review of the uh, website for Incarnation Church. And Tom, why don't you tell us what it, what it said? Well, it um, interestingly, I had a great deal of difficulty finding on the Incarnation Church website anything about their streaming of masses. Uh no. But it is on the um, on the Incarnation YouTube channel under the tab of live streams. And they stream at least one mass every weekend. And in the last month or so, they've got two or three funerals that were streamed also. And they're, you know, the, the recording is is there on YouTube. And uh, they seem to do a pretty good job of it. Many parishes, uh, you know, install these remote cameras in discrete locations that really um, you can't see unless you're looking for them. Um, and they have a technician. Actually, their their funeral. Um, uh, page. Uh, does have a fee, a hundred dollar fee for the technician, for the live streaming technician. So you can probably opt into that or opt out of that. Um, but so that kind of answers the question as to whether it'll be live streamed or not. I think any of us would be willing to pay a hundred dollars, perhaps two hundred dollars, to be able to get both the uh, vigil and and the uh, uh, mass uh, live streamed. And then once it's live streamed, then it is available uh, you know, for a replay on YouTube. And is this in lieu of uh, pew fees, <laughs> bench fees? There were various and sundry names. Well, I growing up years had to pay a quarter for the seat. 
seat money. No, we call I, think it, you know, I think I think it's we more like it in the, money. It's more like in the old days, paying the uh, uh, sacristan to ring the bells a little longer than he usually would. <laughs> right. So, so <laughs> if let, let me just unpack unpack what I heard, or what I think I heard. Who knows. Um, what you're saying about the, the the funeral, it may or may not be live streamed. I think is what I heard. It, it I, may or may not be, but as Tom indicates, uh, it's done all the time. So I why not? I, I I think it's all systems go for for the live stream. Okay, there's uh, no way of firming it up a little bit more because it means setting aside a, a chunk of time. Weren't you going to talk with uh, Father Odell, Tom? I, I was. I got a phone call into him. Haven't received anything back. I'll try again today. You're so good at that. those kind of details, Tom. Yeah. If it gets firmed up, sure, appreciate hearing. I, and I know actually, you what, I, what I think I may well do is, uh, after we finish, I'll phone the number that's given for the uh, bereavement coordinator. You know, usually the lay people on staff are, are a lot better at communicating than these damn clergy yeah so so i just went into youtube if you type in incarnation catholic church glendale california on your youtube site you will see that there are a number of masses that have been streamed like last sun like wednesday 5 17 that was two days ago that was streamed sunday mass was streamed a baptism was streamed and so it's a pretty robust YouTube channel. And so it's Incarnation Catholic Church, Glendale, California, in your YouTube app. And you're going to see that Actually, I, Tom, I sent everybody Tom, the direct link to it. Yeah. A couple of days yeah. ago. But yes, you did. And they seem to do a very nice professional job of it. So that's... Uh, well, we could take up a collection if it takes that to make sure that it happens for George's stuff. That's a, that's an option. That's an uh, option. And that's and, and Tom, I don't, I, I don't. I'm not sure. I thank you, and we thank you enough for the professional job that you do of keeping this site up and running and keeping the contact going among us. Sure, appreciate you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. That's for Welcome. Sure. That's for Amen to that. Here, here, here. I, here, I, here. I, I got a here. lot of that, and I and I do appreciate it. And as as a retreat director, whom we applauded at the end of his retreat one time, uh, said, you know, for me, applause and acclamations are it it it's just like water off a duck's back. But <laughs> notice how much the duck enjoys the water. <laughs> <laughs> And bundles and all that. Good line. <laughs> a good line, yeah. <laughs> at, at first, uh, Susan, uh, George's daughter, and, and Betty were both a bit skeptical about um, oh. the, the, the uh, doing the streaming. Really? Uh, but, but yeah, I, I, and I don't think they were, I think they were under fuzzy thinking, uh, uh, both Bishop Barnes and uh, and Tom and uh, Tom gave me all kinds of uh, arrows to shoot <laughs> at them. <laughs> that and and I, I did, and they changed their minds instantly. So that was good. Um, uh, well, there were two the, things that, that I uh, suggested as positive reasons for them. One of which, a very practical one, we've all had experience either uh, being presiders, celebrants of officiants of weddings and funerals and um, or participants in them where the photography and videography becomes extremely intrusive. And I think that's that might be one of the first things that might come into their mind, you know, have this vision of what they did to so-and-so's wedding when the videographer knocked over the groom or something like that. <laughs> I have, I actually have had that happen. You're probably uh, right. Uh, the, the other thing is, 
you know, I don't know how to say this without being too offensive, but if you want a private funeral, uh, don't have a public mass. You know, just say um, funeral arrangements are private. But if you have a public mass, it is a, and the mass by its very nature is a public act, a communal act. So um, it doesn't really make sense to put, to, to exclude people who absolutely would be there, except for uh, the need to, the to, need to navigate Delta Airlines through Atlanta. Um, or wherever. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, I, I did say by not streaming it, you are excluding some people who have become very, very close to George. So, anyway. Yeah, when Tom, Cotton, when Tom Cotton told me that there were uh, at least 10 or more that are in wheelchairs or bedridden, uh, you know, that makes it pretty uh, compelling, I think, that to the extent that we can, we should do it. And and uh, I, I don't understand how it won't happen if baptisms are being done and yeah. other people. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the vigil uh, the day before, are you there, Norm? Can you hear us? I hear you. Oh, oh wait, cool. Great. Yeah, I hear you. Um, the vigil will be uh, at seven o'clock in the evening on Tuesday, thirtieth. <coughs> and at first, um, the children, John and Susan, had decided that they they were asked and said, "Let's just do two decades of the Rosary." And the bishop said, "Okay, if, if that's what you want to do." L let me tell you a little bit, though. I was hoping that we might be able to. And then he went on saying he'd like to have other people because the vigil is much less formal than mass. He'd like to have music. He'd like to have appropriate people uh, do reflections between the decades. And those reflections would constitute the mystery for that particular decade. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, he'd like to have uh, a reception afterwards, uh, which was tested and that, that would be fine. So he turned them around and now uh, uh, he's going to do the first decade. Um, John uh, Crook will do the second and I can't remember the names of the ladies who will do the others. And we'll have reflections between um, the the decades. Um, we'll start with a hymn and continue with hymns throughout. So that's going to be a, a, a good, fulsome uh, thing, I think. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. I, I agree, Ned, if I can. I just hope somebody pushes for after the person who does the reflection that there'd be maybe 30 seconds of silence to let us all absorb and reflect on what was said. That's what do you think, but Johnny, do you think that's going to be, is there any sense that that rosary service is going to be videoed or is it just the funeral that be videoed? I'm going to try very hard to have them live stream the, the vigil too. Thank uh, you. Now, uh, would, Tommy, when you Tommy, when you say live streaming, for those of us that can't watch it live, it's it's there to be opened up at a later date. Isn't Almost it? immediately videos. afterwards, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That that's the way YouTube that's the way YouTube does it. And I'm glad they're doing it through YouTube rather than uh some other means because YouTube I think is the most accessible. Yeah. Some some churches uh live stream their stuff through uh, um Facebook. And that can become 
a hassle to access it, especially if the person who wants to access it is not a member of Facebook. I know I'm very clumsy about all of this technology, but I've always hated Facebook. Um, <laughs> you, ought to, you ought to see the stuff people say about you, Ned. <laughs> I can imagine. That's two of us, Ned. Yeah, yeah. I don't have anything to do with it either. So, and anyway, I've used I, it a lot, but I hate it. Also, I stay I, away from uh, social media. Fortunately, I have a daughter who doesn't, and so she knows how I feel about the social media. So she watches for family stuff. And so I don't really miss out on, on the important stuff, which I... So you guys, do you guys use, uh, you know, all of those uh, platforms, Instagram and Twitter and, and et cetera? Uh, they're no, just a post. That I lump it all together as social media, as in forget it. <laughs> but I'd say I have a, a, a daughter, my daughter, Catherine, in Hollywood, it's... Uh, monitors all that kind of stuff and she kind of knows the stuff i'm interested in so she's sending stuff my way so it does it feels like i have an editor secretary as well i'm really fortunate uh so i don't really miss out on very much the ones in particular are the ones related to family ancestry and one niece back in massachusetts who goes through old records and stuff and it's absolutely great fun to just see stuff from 100, 150 years ago in the <clears throat> newspaper article of, about a but, farmer, great, great uh, uncle or something. <laughs> it's like your own private Robert Louis Gates. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> yes, you got it, Frank. Yeah. You know, I, I have to... Um, you know, Robert Henry let you all know how much Tom has been just this wonderful resource um, to either simply to talk stuff over or to uh, reformat, uh, find ways to get it done more easily. Um, the bishop asked me to um, suggest readings that um, George particularly liked. So I did. And then I called Tom and ran them past him. And we had a good discussion. Uh, I cited them and then copied them onto, uh, you know, a unified uh, document. And I used the uh, New Revised Standard Version Catholic edition, because I just don't like the bishop's uh, uh, nombre, I think they call it, the new new uh, revised American version. And uh, then I sent it to Tom, and he he turned it into a, a, a I don't know, a presentation. <laughs> it was really cool. Uh, and, and he put in the, uh, the American version, uh, and uh, Bishop Barnes was very pleased with it. There was only one change that he made, and that was to the gospel. Anyway, Tom? Is there any way that that thing that Tom put together for you, Ned, that you could send out to the rest of us prior to? I should have thought of that. Well, yeah. uh, well hold on. The first thing is that I need to go back to your email, Ned, and uh, get the correct... Uh, uh citations for the gospel um and then i can revise it and then i will send that out basically what i did was copy and paste from the uh, u.s bishops uh, lectionary website uh so that 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 basically provided a good you know, readable uh format the other thing it pleased, that, it, it, it pleased the bishop very much. Go ahead. The other thing that I always do, if I do stuff on um, uh, my my word processing program of choice is is um, uh, Apple uh, Pages, um, which Microsoft Documents and or Word Documents and Apple Pages are very risky to send out 
because your receiver's um, computer may not handle it the same way that yours does. And that one reason why I I will all, I will never send a document file a a, um, a a Word doc or docx or a Pages file. It'll always be a um, a PDF file because Good. everybody's Good. everybody's everything handles displays PDF files exactly the same way. So when you're writing something on the <clears throat> on, on a word processor, fine, but don't send that word processor document file. Um, go up to the files menu and uh, scroll down and you'll see a little export. And uh, one of the options will be export to a uh, PDF and then do that and then send the PDF file. The other thing is not only can the other person read it the way that you have presented it, but they can't change it. They can't screw it up and then pass it off as your stuff. <laughs> yeah. Which what they can do with the document file. Which they can't, right. Yeah. So, so that that's you know a, a bit of my technological bit of technological know-how. Just good stuff though. That's helpful. Either, either export it, <clears throat> use that little file yeah. um uh, uh menu item, um drop down menu, export as PDF or print it as PDF. Uh, the, the 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 print programs of those of of those programs the, the print facility will allow you also to print it as a PDF as if you are sending it to a printer. So anyway. older older is better sometimes. Come again. Older older is better sometimes. Very often. Let's all just look in the mirror. Sometimes, yeah. since you're going to change the uh, uh, Tom the the uh, the document uh, to be consistent with uh, what the bishop um, wanted, could you send it to everybody? Yeah, I will. Great. Um, the the bishop. Will. So that will, as far as I know, will be the final version of the. Uh, yeah. The, Reading. Uh, Readings. Now, the other thing that that uh, Ned and I, you know, kind of came up with because these are readings that are provided in the lectionary for funeral masses. <clears throat> uh, both the Isaiah and the Revelation um, references to God wiping the tear from every eye, which was so. Uh, how would I say emotionally special to George when he gave his little mini homily on on the Wednesday mass? Uh, both of those are the first two readings. Wonderful, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. Oh. It's, it's really wonderful. It is really, really nice. And I, I it, yeah. Tom, it's a good thing you've retired because you've had all this time to become the techie of the group. So congratulations <laughs> on that. Good for you. Well, thank you. I I was actually, I was sort of quasi techie in the parishes too because I couldn't find anybody uh, on the staff who was willing to take the time to actually learn some of this stuff. Oh. Because whatever you do on this, techy stuff and I I disagree that it's techy. I think it's just, you know, paying close attention to things like menu items and 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 then asking yourself that question. I wonder if this program will do that. Let's find out. Yeah. And that, you know, a couple of times I've blown up the computer, but uh most of the time I have spent hours discovering whether or not that program would do it. <laughs> and of course, sometimes being very disappointed when after two hours of experimentation, I find that, no, can't do it with that. You should, but you can't.
Tom, having grown up in a machine shop, what you've just described is how you've created your toolbox, which yeah. you took with you. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's no it's no technical genius. It's it's just a matter of of attentiveness to okay, trying to psych out what can this particular program do? <clears throat> can it do what I want it to? And of course, being inherently cheap, I want to be able to find the free stuff that will do it rather than have to pay an arm and a leg. Arm and a leg. Yeah. Yep. Like you got us past some of those uh, uh, requests for money before we could get access uh, articles. So that was cool. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 That, that's one of the neat things. You, you, you you try to change you try to send an article and everyone you send it to runs into a paywall where after the first paragraph it just fades off into non-existence and says pay pay beaucoup bucks in order to get access to this article and if i'm a member uh, usually not always sometimes they defeat this too but usually you can print <clears throat> you can print the article to a PDF file and then share that. It, it, it related to that in this group, based on this conversation, Tom, you are likely to be the person who's probably tried chat GPT to just try it out. I'm wondering if you have. Yes. Yes. <laughs> could, could, you, could you tell us a little, and anyone else who's, who's done, I have done it, uh, if anyone else has had the experience of it, could you talk about it a little bit? I'd be really interested in hearing. Yeah, there, there, there are some of its answers um, that I have wanted to to share with you all, one of which, and I will, um, because just on a whim, I asked, um, I asked it to uh, write a summary of the life and significant works of Father Thomas Welbers. <laughs> oh, oh, what fun. And got a Thomas Welbers who was a priest, in, a Dutch priest who studied at the Greg and wrote some huh. theological works. Uh, and I have, you know, I, I, I regularly search for my name and I haven't found any other Thomas Welberses anywhere on the web. There's a few other Welberses, but not uh, not, not Thomas. And there's a, a divine word missionary from the turn of the, of the 20th century, 1900s to, to, to 20s. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Um, 1800s to 1900s, uh, who was a uh, um, a Dutch or Belgian immigrant, uh, redemptorist, uh, not redemptorist, divine word priest who ministered in San Antonio, Texas, named Lambert Welvers. That's the only other Welvers that I found that is identifiable as a as a priest, but. This chat GPT, I don't know if it invented this guy or what, but I'll, I'll, I'll send I'll send you my my interesting biography from uh, chat GPT. Right. And and who needs ancestry.com? I, I wonder how if anyone has used ancestry or if you've used ancestry to do your uh, <clears throat> ancestors kind of research, whether or not it came up with a, a similar character well, i i have um interestingly i thought my mother's ancestry would not be traceable and it's traceable back to several generations back in the ukraine uh she was a they called at that time german russian immigrant from uh there was a german russian colony that catherine the great settled in in parts of russia and including the Ukraine, which was, of course, part of Russia at that time. Uh, and and that's all pretty well documented because there's two German-Russian uh, historical societies, I find out. 
uh, my dad, I cannot trace him beyond the 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 steamship that he uh, immigrated on. I cannot trace him back to the old world. And you know, he came. My my dad's father came from uh, uh, Germany back in the late eighteen. I think 1880s, 1890s, something like that. Did he go to Dakota? Is that where he went? Your, yeah. your grandfather? Yeah. That's a fascinating period in American history because um, there were major marketing efforts in Eastern and Central Europe in the latter part of the 19th century to recruit immigrants into the United States. And um, for particular uh, skills, farmers, farming, you know, they, yeah. They, be, yeah, the it, be, we the, had the um, huge land that that we stole from the Indians. Now we needed somebody to make it productive. Uh -huh. Yeah, and the other, and the and, and the and the major corporation, the most significant corporation that was encouraging migration was the Great Northern Railway, railroad that went from Minneapolis to Seattle. And part of the um, effort on the part of the federal government to develop the West and to encourage railroad expansion was that for every mile of railroad that the Great Northern built, they got a section of land, which is one mile by one mile, alternating for all of those thousands of miles that went across the plains. And so I've seen advertisements that the Great Northern had in Germany, in the Ukraine, then called the Ukraine, um, trying to, and in Scandinavia, because where my mother was from in South Dakota, it was predominantly Finlanders, as they called them then, and Russians that migrated into that part of South Dakota, up north of Aberdeen, where Tom's family was. It's a phenomenal thing compared to the migration policies that we have today in the United States. You know, when when you when you had efforts to aggressively pay for the passage of families that had farming experience, and then in Michigan they went to Poland to recruit miners because of the iron ore deposits that they discovered in Michigan, they were going aggressively to Poland and Northern Germany where the mining, mining was. And it's just kind of a fun, fun chapter in American social life, which explains why the Midwest looks like it does. Um, yeah. <clears throat> enough, oh, enough, his, Tom, enough history. Tom, you may have mentioned steam. I'm sorry. Did the steamship come into Ellis Island? Yeah. I think it departed. I, I have to um, go back and look. I think it departed from Bremen. And you are frozen, Frank. So if it came into Ellis Island, you get a cop. Oh, OK. Yeah, I've, 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 I, I, I have access yeah, to that. I'm in and out here. Must yeah. be cold. Can you hear me now? You're completely frozen. Yeah, yes. picture, uh, picture's frozen, yeah. And you're frozen. Am I frozen? Yeah. You're frozen. Yes. Frozen. Many are called, but few are frozen. You're <laughs> 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 a poet at heart. Bob Bob Bunner is not frozen. Bob. Only Frank is frozen. <laughs> now you're back. You're, you're, you're okay. Back. All right. You got your hand well, on the camera or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, the point I, I wanted to make, if you can hear me now, Tom, is that you yeah. can get a copy of the manifest yeah. at Ellis Island. Yeah, I've seen that. Which will give you a little yeah. more information. You've seen it? I've seen it, yeah. But as far okay. as origin, it, it, it simply said Germany. Well, but I, and, okay, origin, but it, and, and I think he my was parents' married. manifest says. Yeah, well, I can go back and check it out, but it, you know, I do know that he came from the lower Rhineland. 
uh, around okay. uh, Emmerich, uh, right at the border of Holland. I know that the family originated there, but it's uh, hard to trace beyond that. It, yeah. Okay. I visited there, you know, in the late 60s and, and mid 70s, but I wasn't all that interested in doing the tracing of ancestry, which I probably could have very easily with a parish priest there. But mm -hmm. uh, now I, you know, I, I should email the, the various churches around there, which I haven't done. See if I can get some kind of baptismal record or marriage record. So, Ned, it seems from what you've said is that the funeral ceremony is really coming together very nicely. Are there mm -hmm. any are there any loose ends that you think need to be taken care of? Um, no. Um, Monday, uh, the bishop and, and Betty and I are going to do a complete review and see whether there are any loose ends that we missed somehow. Um, just jump in, Ned. Um, sure. John Brooke is going to lead one of the decades, will he yes. also do a reflection? I hope so. And uh, if so, <clears throat> I'm talking about some of the difficulties at Kathy's funeral, my wife. Mm -hmm. And that was people who got emotional if they were alone. But if there were two, one could help the <clears throat> other support. And I just play that card in case... That makes sense for John. It, it, well, it makes a lot of sense for John generally. John was an utterly, utterly shy guy. I mean, almost remember. At one point, um, just before George passed away, um, he sort of started to cry and and then he'd suppress it and i i asked him if he wanted to go for a walk and he said oh god yes and it was a beautiful day uh so we went out and uh, got a couple of blocks away from george's home and uh on a very a particularly large front grassy yard we with a little bit of a a mound in it we we sat and talked for 45 minutes or so. Um, he's a very injured guy uh, and uh, has a lot of grief and other things uh, that are uh, held inside that he really needs to release. And I've learned a little bit from my wife, uh, you know, the clinical psychologist, you know, therapy, all that stuff. And uh, just a few little triggers. You know, he was pouring stuff out, stuff he said he'd never said before. And anyway, long time, long story short, he does need um, support. I, I think he'll hold it together. I'll be there. Uh, and he really trusts me. I had Darlene used to babysit John and uh, Susan. And there was this love relationship uh, among them, um, our children and George's children. And Susan uh, uh, is uh, very close to Darlene. <clears throat> uh, and so, uh, John was always just over in a corner. Uh, you know, it, it was a lot like I was reminded, Norm, of, of what you said about yourself, which just knocked me off my horse about being very, very shy uh, at one of our fratelli meetings. Yes. Um, anyway, long, too many things to say, maybe, maybe overly disclosing, I don't know. But yeah, he needs help. Uh, and, uh, and
and he'll get it. Uh, but but uh, I'll be with him at the at the vigil, and and he'll be fine, I think. Good, good. He's a really good guy. That nice work, Chaplain Ned. <laughs> coach, you know, coach. <laughs> it's yeah. just listening, uh, uh, Bob. Right. You said it. You said it many, many, many times. Listening, just listening. All of us, Tom, uh, Tim, uh, Frank. You just listen, and and they know you're listening, and that gives them a door to to share. Nice. Who is this fellow? I'm sorry. Who is the fellow that you're referencing? I missed it. John, John Crook. John is George's uh, son. One of his sons. Okay, that's what I sensed, but I, I uh, he has he has he had uh, three children. I was a deacon when uh, his first wife uh miscarried or she didn't miscarry she delivered a stillborn child and i was a deacon at, in uh, pomona and he called me crying and and said please get here this is i don't know two in the morning and so i got on my horse and got there uh it was an east los angeles hospital not the best hospitals in the world and uh saint mary's it was called it's now a big wonderful thing and he was just devastated um anyway that was that was maria guadalupe um he has a very very special had a very very and now he's even better connection with our lady of guadalupe um and uh they had two other children um susan and john um so three children. First uh, was a, uh, a memory that George will never had never forgot, and uh, I think his devotion to Our Lady of Guadalupe, you know, was increased very much by that that event. Um, what was the question? <laughs> Just who this who this one you were talking about? So his son. Yes, I know, John. I'm, yeah. I'm, there's so much to George Crook. It is just, uh, just crazy amazing. Uh, anyway, yeah. In future, in future, Ned, Ned, over the next year, year and a half, if every three to four months you give John a call, just. Uh, to ch which you may do anyway, but to just check in and just say, just checking in and wondering how you're doing. Because I'm... it sounds like from what you said, the grieving process for him could really uh, be difficult. He, he asked me to stay close and and would I mind talking with him often? And I said, absolutely not at all. I, I'd love to. Uh, I always wanted to, and something always got in the way. I didn't know that he was hurting so bad, but now I, I'll just make it a you know. I I I like being with him, so it's not going to be hard. It'll be good. Thank you. Thank Bob. you. He's a he's a fifty two three year old um, addictions counselor. Um, he, <clears throat> he told me that he was never, he never thought that he was addicted to drugs. Uh, but he qualified for several very excellent programs, uh, for, um, learning how to help those who have addictions, particularly, uh, chemical addictions. Uh, he's got long hair. He's very slow uh, spoken, articulate, uh, thoughtful. And oh, some of the things that he hears and sees uh, from addicts that, that come for help. Oh, God, he told me about one of them. I, it was hard to, you know, you don't like to have that stuff in your head. Um, he's, he's a wonderful guy, actually. Well, I mean, just a wonderful guy.
So it will be hard. So yes, I will. On a related subject, uh, you know, a, a month or two ago, Tim kind of stimulated the beginning of an, a conversation about our own death preparations and mm -hmm. such like. And this morning on the LA Times website, uh, there's a series of articles on basically how to talk about death, how to think about death in terms of, okay, the practical things, what do you do about it? And a very helpful article that I read, which I'm going to be going back to for my own, um, for my own thinking, is uh, basically if someone dies unexpectedly, here is a checklist for what to do. And uh, I found that very helpful. I'm going to send you all the link to that article. It may be, um, it may be something um, helpful to have in your own repertory, if you will. Many years <laughs> ago, I bought from O'Connor Mortuary uh, a block of uh, to handle my final processes, um, but I haven't updated that in the longest time, and it's caused me to reflect: Do I want? What do I want? And mm -hmm. I'm listening very much to what happened with Kathy's funeral and with this one as sort of. Uh, insights, timely insights that I'll, mm -hmm. after George's celebration, I'm going to O'Connor and going to update everything. Yeah, that's really important. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Frank, we can hear you. I just did it with my My um, two children, we went to the funeral director mm -hmm. um, when you move into the residence. So it was fairly easy. There were some funny moments, actually. <laughs> um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. He had caskets that were made by an Irish casket maker. So I had selected one. And then we looked at them and my son said, dad, it's only $500 more than the one you selected. And it's called Lismore. Now, there's a pattern of Waterford glass called Lismore. So I'm going to have the Frank, you, you're cutting in and out of that way. Yeah. Buried in the boat. Frank, Frank, we can't hear you. Sorry, Frank. Frank, it has you're... the same name of a goat. Can you hear me? Not. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, no. It's cutting off. We're, we're, missing most, out. we're missing most of this, Frank. We're missing most of what you're saying. I wonder if, Frank, if you could kill your image and just uh, share your voice. We might get a better connection. So how do I do that? Yeah. Well, I don't know how what do phone I do you that? have an iPhone. Oh, I on, the, on the bottom of the screen, yeah. on the, the bottom of the screen should be a stop video footnote. I think what Frank is doing is so cool. I hope you've got some Jameson's in your casket and a bottle of Guinness to see you on your <laughs> journey. Well, well I, I, if you didn't hear me, the casket, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the casket is Lismore. Yeah. Right. And the Lismore is also a, a Waterford glass pattern. Have that. We have that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to have the the comfort of knowing that something that provided me in comfort in life is that has this bears the same name as something that's going to contain me in death. There you go. <laughs> that's good. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry it took it took so long to get a trivial point out. The connection the connection is anyway. is, is pretty bad uh with respect to, to um audio. And, I and video too, I guess. Well I think it would be I know. A tremendous I'm gonna have to leave early. It would be a tremendous waste to, uh, to look at Bob's whole bottle of, of Jameson's. And there it is. <laughs> Cheers. There you go. And, and, Mary, and Mary, Mary, Alice, Mary Alice Murphy and I got it in Ireland at the Waterford. Well, Murphy. Beautiful. Right. It's it's it it is absolutely stunning crystal. It's just yes. absolutely beautiful. And regrettably, ninety nine point nine percent of the time, it just sits in a cabinet, and uh, and so, but every now and then, every now and then, special occasions, it comes out. Does All that right. does that make your wine taste better? It it makes everything taste better. <laughs> Especially <laughs> Jameson's. <laughs> oh my goodness! Have any of you considered cremation? That's a, we're, that's me. I looked at it and, and decided not uh, just because of where I'll be buried. I'll be buried in a a plot where the priests of uh, my diocese uh, uh, are buried over in Youngstown and. Without that, the, the the cremation would be one of these things, and it'd just be one of box of about twenty of them of different people. So I said, "What the heck?" I I I have uh, Frank uh, and uh, and I'm going to go through with it, barring any unforeseen, because I'm currently looking for. Uh, You're going through. You're going through what, Bob? Cremation. Oh, I thought you were talking about. Okay. Yeah, and that's cause. I'm actually looking for a picture because I'm going to show you my future home, and oh, here it is. This is always with a. It's better to see it. From outside than inside. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I have to go. I have a doctor's appointment. Hear me, one, bud. One of my sibs back east put it. Take wonder. care, Frank. God bless. Bye, Frank. Bye, bye, Frank. Bye, Frank. Hope bye, everything Frank. goes. Hope everything goes well. Bye. Yeah, it's routine. Okay, thanks. Okay, take care, Fred. Ned should be right. As as Bob talked about that picture, it reminded me. Has the idea of that poster? Oh, that's pictures? fine. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I should have told it's you. In the works. Yeah, John. Uh, What's that? Given his experience recently uh, with the death of his former wife, uh, suggested that I really push to have some nice. Um, uh, easels uh, with with lots of pictures of George in, in, and uh, that's being taken care of I'm told <clears throat> there's and lots there of will be two one on each side so that I, people I, coming down from each side will <laughs> <laughs> I believe so but I'm not I'm not uh, given you know uh, those kinds of details that they kind of looked at me and said uh, where do you want them placed and exactly why? <laughs> and I said, you know, it's a, you're doing it, but, you know, but just have a lot of pictures. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they they are going to have an, and um, hopefully, uh, Ted Howard's pictures can get uh, um, you know uh, contributed. So yes, yes, it'll be good. It'll Bravo. be good. Thanks. Yes. I, I'm told yes. I you know. I, I, as soon as I got a little bit too far about where they ought to be put, <laughs> I got some stairs and, you know, we can take care of that. So, yes, so that sounds good. 
well, even at the risk of sh shifting subjects slightly, I, I sent out uh, a copy from the NCR yesterday about the Texas bishop uh, yes. by the name of uh, Strickland. And I'm yeah. wondering, yeah. Bob, Bob Bono, anyone know anything, Thomas, really, anything more about him other than he has kind of, the name has has crossed my mind with in the past some references in the NCR to the, you know that essentially he's to the right of Attila the Hun. Yeah, and, he certainly uh, is. And 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 that uh, and that there were a number of complaints on the part of the priest of his diocese of his being a tyrant, and in the old, kind of old school. Uh, tradition and he, here he is basically even though there's a certain amount of demure on his part saying no no I didn't really say that but basically calling uh that's called oh, back peddling not demure didn't he <laughs> and a couple of other <laughs> I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm my own uh feeble way I'm trying to be kind to <laughs> someone for whom I don't have any respect whatsoever Bob, like or Francis, Tom, calling this, Francis publicly basically a heretic heretic yeah yeah you yeah. know what 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 struck me and I re replied there you know his his bottom line point was follow Jesus and you know his interpretation is obviously different from Francis's but yes. both he and Francis are actually making the same point follow yeah. Jesus Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And your your point was so well taken the way you replied. If only if yeah, from my perspective anyway, uh if only if only he would. Yeah. If only he would. But it has something to do with a different uh, you know, different take on, you know, what's what's reality anyway. I have no idea whether uh, any of you happen to see during the week uh on uh, public television uh, Wednesday evening uh, time zone differences uh, uh, to be accounted for, but it was nine o'clock on, uh, on help me anyone with the the science every every week, a wonderful feature it's called, I'll never forget what's its name. Uh, uh, at, at, at any rate, this this particular uh, this particular, episode on on Wednesday of this week was on the brain and and the whole notion of perception and it was the most amazing piece of video and uh, interviewing and kind of looking at a fresh perspective of 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 how we perceive things what is reality the you probably remember a couple years back there was the one of the hottest items that started in the US but spread all over the world was this dress color and how it's perceived differently yeah. half the population saw it as uh, um, as as uh, blue and black the pattern and another part of the population saw it as gold and what was the other color? Gold and blue or something, but very, very different ones. And they use that as an example of, of uh, how the brain, uh, the human brain perceives depending on what the context is. And boy, that got me thinking about, you know, even this conversation about Bishop Strickland and, and Tom's pointing, you know, accurately right to the final word, follow Jesus. Uh, what, you know, it's, it's how we perceive the significance of that message and that it, it depending on, on, on on our context currently and historically we really do see things differently the bottom line on this particular uh, nova is the you probably have heard it uh, yeah. nova is the series on yeah. this is one that's worth taking a peek at if, even if you have no interest whatsoever in science it's so superbly done 
the interview process. It's so easy to follow along that it kind of leaves you going, left me going, oh. And here I thought I had some idea of what perception was all about. And then at the end, I was questioning that saying, do I really know what that is in light of this new data uh, over the last couple of years as they are discovering the intricacies of the brain? But the bottom line conclusion for me uh, was that uh, how incredibly unique every individual is. And of course, Tom in particular, a student of, of science all his life, and everything I'm saying about human like beings. Time. Human beings, we can we can go go back and say it's probably true for all of God's creatures. And the bottom line that I see in all of that is uh, we get a glimpse once again of the uh, of of who God, who who this love at the heart of the universe is. And we, we and we can never really know them. I mean, the paradox of knowable but completely unknowable. And you know, paradox. that's related to all that stuff we were talking about before about time. Yeah. And uh, I, I, yeah, I, I, I didn't that Nova, but I'm going to check it out too. By the way, uh, regarding Strickland, huh. we've got okay. Um, in this group, Bob, you are one of the founding members of the Association of U.S. Catholic Priests, right? Right. And uh, the other Bob, you are a very active member of Corpus. And, and, and I have, so have many of you run across the uh, coalition of for the coalition for canceled priests. I have. Which For what priests? Cancel. Cancel. I don't know what. The priests who are disciplined by their bishops for being ultra conservative or ultra traditionalist. Uh, Altman being one of them. Who I think uh, uh, Strickland received him into his diocese, didn't he, at one point? You know, I think you're right. Right. That, that rings a bell. I remember reading that in the NCR and going, aha, because I was curious about who this, what this organization was and how they connect. And so they are the uh, sort of right wing uh, of the right wing among the priests. And, but, and Strickland, I'm pretty sure if, uh, yeah, I'm not sure who the person was, but he did that. Yeah, I think. Well, that guy that was um, all about um, um, abortion. What's his name? He was he was all over the place, and he's really okay. been hung out. Now. He's been defrocked, I think. What was yeah, his well, name? Oh, Pavone. Yes, Pav yeah. Pavone. Yeah, Pavone. It's actually Leo's side. I think so. He's still yeah. the, the, the head of the uh, group that uh, uh, priests for life. Yeah, yeah. And he's got. So anyway, I just you know thought oh. I'd bring that up too that there is an association of those types that uh, are trying to be self-promoting. Yeah, I think I think they're they're all connected in some way with Burke. I think and then Henry calls the DCC Catholic uh, clergy there. He was called uh, something Catholic clergy. What what is that, Norm? DCC. Um, got uh, Gonzalez and. Catholic. Mm. And and Bob, you were saying the link or possible connection with Cardinal Burke. Yeah, Cardinal Burke and uh, the, the the Italian guy that was the um, Vigano. He, uh, Vigano is the, is uh, he was the Archbishop who was over here representing the Vatican, and then Burke is an actual cardinal. Um, the other guy is not, uh, mm -hmm. but they 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 seem to be of the same mindset that it's. Um, very negative, uh, say the least. 
Yeah. Right. And, the, and, and there's another person who is, um, I think there's a deep underground connection with, and now I'm trying to think of his name, that totally unkempt guy who was part of Trump's uh, inner circle at one time. Bannon. 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 Yeah. yeah. He's not a bishop. He's not a priest. Not a priest. <laughs> He's barely a Catholic, although he, he makes some... You know, I suspect I may have actually run into him or seen him at one point because I know that when I was in Beverly Hills, he was living there and probably at some point went to uh, went to Good Shepherd, but you know, I never noticed him. Uh, he didn't come up and challenge me anyway. Missed your claim to fame, Tom. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> no, the claim to fame, my claim to fame was I, I was told to go to hell by uh, uh, Antonin Scalia. Oh, wow. Well, not Again? quite. So, I recognized how, how, how did that happen? <laughs> I recognized him sitting in the back row before mass uh, at Good Shepherd. And, you know, he was sprawled across the, the, the pew just sitting there. And I recognized him and I said, uh, hello and and uh, welcome to Good Shepherd. And he said, I don't go for that kind of stuff. <laughs> Justice Scalia. Scalia. Scalia, yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> I don't really go for what me. stuff, though. I wonder what he meant. <laughs> well, being friendly in church. Oh. Right. So, hey, can I? Okay, so given that we're talking about religion type things um there, there there there's so tuesday's gospel there is a term in here that is it's not been that i have heard a couple of times that i don't understand it and jesus is referring to what he calls the ruler of the world and so in the gospel for tuesday which is part of john's gospel he says, because at the end, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. And then there are a couple of other scriptural passages attributed to Jesus, where he talks about the ruler of the world. Who, who is he talking about? Satan. Satan. So, so how is it that Jesus himself is depicting Satan as the ruler of the world. Um, and it reminds me of the temptation in the desert where the devil takes him up to this high mountain and says, here are my kingdoms, all this kind of stuff. Do, do we just presume that the devil, by God's will, rules the world? I mean, I, I'm, I'm very confused. And so I, there are three priests, four, three priests and a former priest here. Help me understand. <laughs> What this ruler of the world shit means, because I don't get it. Uh, you know, Bob is not a former priest. <laughs> he has a, he has a hey, great Tim. influence. Hey, he has Tim. a tremendous influence on the world. Hey, Tim, it's indelible. The mark is indelible. indelible. Right. Right. Remember I'm that? So if you want to be a legalist, uh, but speak English. Speak English. Right. Ordination makes an indelible mark. It's, a, it's like confirmation. Right. The character they call it. And, and but 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 in John's Gospel, uh, no theologian am I, but if I remember correctly, the, the the distinction that John makes is between the world and and God's realm. And so, uh, don't be a child of this world. Be a child of God. That's that's the understanding. Technically, um, others may have a, a, a you know a different a different take, but that basically is what it's about. When when John speaks of the world, don't be worldly. That means of not being of God's spiritual realm. So today we we that language kind of at least for me that language sort of leaves me dull because God is. 
you know, totally infused in this world. God is of this world. We, we wouldn't talk that way. But 2,000 years ago, uh, there, you know, it's okay. It's the, it's the way that John writing, you know, about 100 years after, uh, you know, a little less after Jesus Jesus's ascension, which is coming up as an observance this week, um, no, writing last, last week. at that writing at that time, uh, and spoke that way and used that kind of language, and it was meaningful to the people. Today, we 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 wouldn't be using, we wouldn't be talking that way. You you can I think some of me. us. I'm sorry. Stop. Stop. I mean, but why does Jesus use the word ruler of the world? when he's referring to Satan. I don't, I'm still not, you, you've not helped me, Bob. Okay, I, oh, I think, okay. I, I, think I, I can help that. Uh, I'm currently just finishing up a commentary on John's gospel by a, um, a Messianic Jewish uh, scripture scholar who basically is, you know, writing, his, writing a very interesting take on uh, John's gospel. And uh, part of that take is trying to address what, what people have always seen as the anti-Semitic character of John's gospel, you know, Jesus against the Jews. And a point that he's making, what should be obvious, is the Jews in that time did not mean the same thing as the Jews do now. Um, the more specific would probably be, he uses the Greek term eudaioi to refer to the particular faction of, of Judean, in other words, from the tribe of Judah, not of the whole of Israel, but of the tribe of Judah, the, the temple establishment who saw their, basically, who, who claimed to be in control of the um, uh, authenticating anybody's claim to be Messiah. And that, he said, is, is one, one part of it. But the other part of it is that these temple authorities saw any kind of messianic claim to be dangerous because their very legitimacy depended on the keeping peace with the Roman rule. And the thing that Jesus is talking about, the ruler of this world was essentially the Roman empire and its control of everything. Oh, so not Satan. Well, yeah, I, th I think that they would the you know, that the Roman Empire was essentially controlled by the whole personification of the ultimate forces of evil, which we would call Satan. Tom, uh, is there any, is, is this particular writing that you're referring to, um, uh, th does that give a, a more fulsome understanding? I've always had the same it, wonderment. It, it, it that, very um, definitely gives a, a really, I think, a very good perspective on where Jesus is coming from and the whole environment within which he is presented in the Gospel of John. And well, this morning, uh, it sees uh, basically the Gospel of John as being a Jewish gospel. And he he interprets it completely within the 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 context of the factions within the among the children of Israel at the time of Jesus. This morning in the Acts of the Apostles, the the yeah uh, re reading yeah. is that what you're referring to, uh, to uh, Tim? Uh, again, the Jews raise their heads. And go to I can't remember the Greek guy, and, and they want to throw uh, uh, Paul out, uh, and and uh, uh, I can't remember the name of the uh, 
uh, potentate that they were I before. Uh, uh, no, uh, there no. too. Remember one thing. Galileo uh, was his name. Galileo. Galileo. The right. Jews, the, the Jews of the diaspora were, I think, probably for the most part, descendants of the inhabitants of Jerusalem and Judea that were dispersed in the Babylonian captivity. So that, again, it's not all the 12 tribes of Israel. They are referring to a particular faction of uh, those who would claim to be children of Israel and people of the covenant. I, I think what, wow. I'm, what I'm saying is it was a much more complicated picture of, of how people identified themselves in relation to the original covenant between God and the family of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It, it is a much more complicated thing. And and, and yeah. I think, you know, we need, I, I need, you know, I, there's so much that, that I need, but uh, to understand. And this thing that Tim just raised has always puzzled me. The prince of this world, but I have overcome. Yes. Yeah, exactly. You know? And, and, well, what? How does that all fit into the culture and and theology of that time? And you're you're saying that there's, a, I know. I mean, I, we've always been aware that there are factions within uh, the Jews, uh, but are, but how do they relate to one another? Because some seem to want to take authority at one point, and others authority at another point, and then you've got these, you know. I'd like to make one, one point that, uh, you know, it's conviction. Theology doesn't even apply there. In, okay. large, part, um, in large part, because theology is a, a later concept. What applies there is what does it mean for us to be a people of the covenant? And how do we behave as people of the covenant, both individually and communally? And there were difference of, uh, differences of opinion. And, you know, the rabbinical schools were all right. part of, you know, these learned men, of course, uh, arguing about fine points of what it means to be faithful to the covenant, what it means to observe the covenant. And, and that's a huge tradition in in the Old Testament uh, uh, Jewish uh, priesthood. And you evil, know, argue and evil and, would and, be basically what pulls you out of that covenant. Now, all in, all of this, all of these things would be would be subjects of uh, New Testament and and uh, current time theology. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've always thought that the, that the Jews had such a literal understanding of the scriptures that it was difficult for them to speculate and and or or allow themselves to get a little commonsensical about things. Mm -hmm. um, but 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 to to understand all of that stuff would be really great to be able to then. Put that understanding to work when we hear Jesus say, Prince of the world, and I have overcome, and the Jews uh, uh, demanding that uh, uh, Paul, you know, be be punished, and and the what was the guy, guy Gaius, or whatever the hell, he says, I, I, that, that's got nothing to do with me, you know, that's doctrine, and you go do whatever you're going to do. Uh, and so they beat some guy in, in front of the, uh, the leader of the, the synagogue. They beat him up. <laughs> yeah, and 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 the, the 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 Greek guy looks at him and turns around and walks off. <laughs> no, no, no skin off his nose. Uh, anyway, okay. I, while we, while we were chatting, I did a, a a quick Google search for whatever that's worth, and basically. 
uh, looking at the word world in, and uh, the, this biblical commentary says that, you know, the word world in Greek cosmos spelled with a K transliterated in English uh, as our word cosmos appears uh, 185 times in the New Testament, 78 times in John. And then he goes on to say uh, that John uses the word quote, world, cosmos, in 10 different ways in his gospel. Wow. So like anything else, you have to look, as for Tim, look as, you, as we listen to the context. Mm -hmm. uh, and and then it just goes, I won't run through the 10, but if you're interested, you just can Google it and, and take a peek. And, you know, it's... Things like the entire universe is one, the physical earth is another, the world system is another. Uh, all of humanity minus believers is, is one of the ways John refers to the world. And then it, it, there, there are any number of others, but the only way you can really discern it in, in both uh, uh, John's gospel and also in the, in the epistles of John, where uh, he uses it another 40 times and, and in a variety of different ways. Okay, so let me read so let me let me look at the context. What's sorry? The website oh, here, here. That, you, that, that the Google search led you to that uh, makes those. That, 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 this particular one, it's called, uh, the one I uh, opened up was like the first one there. It's called effectual grace, all mm -hmm. one word, dot com. Oh, okay. The other thing you might do, Tom, is I wonder if your AI yeah. app. Anyways, so here is Galatians. Oh, okay. that. That, that, so here's that, here's that. here's chapter chapter four of Galatians. Before a person comes to know God, he serves those that are not gods by nature. Satan is the ruler of this world, but he was not made to be so. And so when I read these things, where either in Old Testament, Acts of the Apostles, letters and all that, they make this reference of Satan being the ruler of the world. And I don't know, um, and, and Jesus sort of gave him that, um, you know, didn't, so why didn't Jesus, when he was taken up to the pinnacle and shown all of the kingdoms of the world and satan says i can give you all of these why didn't jesus say no, you know bullshit bullshit they belong they belong to me i mean there's of course you know you don't you don't know about that there was no witness to jesus's temptation so i don't know how they got this information but it's always been confusing to me because it seems that um it's not that like God turned over the world to Satan. Certainly, we know Satan is powerful and dominates in many aspects, but there are just too many scriptural references to Satan being the ruler of the world. That's all I'm going to say is, is I don't, I don't get it. I, I couldn't explain it to anybody if I tried, <laughs> but I thought I would get some insight today, which I, you know, thank you guys. Well, Tim, I think it's not that complicated. It's just that world as a whole does not believe in God, follow God's way, bring love into the world. You know, it's rather it's a world in which you find lots of wars, people hurting each other, people stealing from each other, people killing each other. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a world that, in, in a sense, that Jesus is saying is not controlled by his love. You know, and okay. That's, oh, okay, Norm, that helped me a lot. Yeah, that, that did help Norm. And Yeah. I'm 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 catechist for my two grandkids, a fourth grader and a seventh grader. And this past week, uh, the lesson had to do with interpreting like this, and the difference between Catholicism and a variety of other Christian religions, and the whole. And we dealt with and tried to wrestle with the notion of what it means to be a fundamentalist. And basically, the, the the teaching text which comes out of uh, the Jesuits in Chicago, Scholastic Press, uh, the home study version, pretty darn good. 
uh, through their local parish, uh, which I subscribe to and, and use, but that the, the bottom line was basically Catholics are not supposed to be fundamentalists. <laughs> we don't. We, we, we understand that there are a lot of different senses and meanings. Uh, you know, in seminary, you used to talk about the Formgeschichte, uh, the, from the German understanding, literally, of the, the many uh, meanings, uh, allegorical, so the little, but that Roman Catholics are not literal interpreters of the scriptures. Amen. Um, but it, it is certainly one way uh, and it's uh, but we need to move we need to move beyond it so and in that sense I just said this particular author who I don't know anything about uh, talks about the 10 different senses if you like that uh, John uses when he speaks about the world Now, John certainly does use different, when he says the world, it means different things in different places in John. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. you, you gotta look at the context, yeah. Thank you. Uh, always, John's always struck me as a, a guy who's talking about a dream and uh, taking uh, the stuff that the, the synoptics um, have said uh, and contextualize them according to his interpretation, which is a kind of a cosmic thing. Um, and so it's always been hard for me to, I love John. It used to be my very favorite gospel, but, but uh, you know, the, the more I got into it, the more either I understood or was befuddled uh, by how he concluded uh, some of the things that he says. Um, does that make any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the things I had to dig into, uh, we, they kept making references to the book of Revelations the uh, and apocalyptic literature. And so one of the things I had to do was like reread certain sections of it. I always found, you know, the book of Revelations kind of like impossible <laughs> and then scold myself for saying, but it's part of revealed scripture. I mean, you need to, uh, look at it and and it reminded it reminded me that the very last pages of it are what we uh what we acknowledge that basically the after all is said and done and the various mythic uh accounts in in john as he's sitting there on that rock of patmos that he was con condemned to by domitian the emperor as part of that persecution he finally says and what this is all about is that we have this incredible savior who has done it for us and who will return at the end of time, which is congruent then with, with the, 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 with the other gospel writers and, but, and, and the writers of the epistles as well. Bob, in, in trying to understand, I, I don't know, I, I feel a sort of a kinship with Tim right now. Um, in trying to understand what scripture means, that is the word of God. But and so we read what we read, and you know, good, good, recipitur ad modum recipientis, etc. So, 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 according to my P brain, I'm reading this stuff and I'm to take it as the word of God, and yet I have to have a certain level of skepticism about meaning uh, 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 or maybe skepticism isn't the right word a certain I've, I've got to give it a certain uh curiosity some some buffer between what it's saying and what it means um and and uh that's always puzzled me i, I want to know and I can't because it's a great mystery, but we need to understand so that we might behave in in following Jesus. Uh, and, uh, you know, here we have the Prince of 
of the world who is the devil. And now we've got to say, but wait a minute. There are 10 different ways of understanding the world War. and other ways to understand how the devil is the prince of. And what we come up with is who those who follow the devil or who are influenced mightily by the devil are his world. And that's how we need to understand it rather than the world. Um, so that's why I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to get the, the name of the book that you're talking about, Tom, and uh, seeing if that is, is it uh, thick and, and uh, not um, terribly thick. It's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's popularly written. It's oh, good. So it's, some it, would say it, that it, it's it, probably it's too popularly written for scholarship. But then again, most scripture scholars uh, don't really manage to capture the Jewishness of Jesus terribly well either. They acknowledge it, but I don't think they probe into into it from a Jewish perspective. Who's the author, Tom? The per, the guy's name is Eli Lezorkin hyphen Eisenberg. That's a mouthful. A nice yeah. spelling. Ah, ah, spelling please. Uh, yeah, I'll, this sounds very Jewish. Yeah, I'll, I'll send it's, you the link. He's it, it, it's a, a an institute for biblical studies and the Israel Bible Center. It's actually in Israel. Uh, but I think from a Jewish yeah. perspective, is, does he identify as Jewish or Christian or a Christian I, he Jew? He identifies Jewish? as a, uh, a, a Jew uh, who is a Jewish disciple of Christ. Huh. In other words, he's, he's one of those, and I would tend to agree with it. You, know, you don't you don't give up your Jewishness by um, acknowledging and following Jesus as Messiah. In fact, Jews for Jesus, Jews for Jesus. Oh, well, yeah, except yeah. Jews for Jesus has turned you know became a a sort of I, a, yeah. a catchword, uh, evangelical fundamentalist sort of. Movement. That's true. No, you're right. No, you're right. Mike Pence talks about it all the time. Yeah. So uh, the Jewish, uh, the name of the book is the Jewish Gospel of Jesus, the Jewish Gospel of John, discovering Jesus, King of all Israel. And he places it also within the context of the dispute between the Jews, meaning Judah is. The, the leaders of Judah and the temple leaders between them and the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. and he sees the uh, Samaritans as being part of John's John's I, John's direction. Really, is is that Jesus was first seeking to include the Samaritans under the umbrella of the one people of the covenant. Hey, Tom, how do you stumble? On, yeah, how do you how do you stumble on to these interesting books that you you oftentimes comment to us about? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I how do my eyes and ears open? Well, does someone come knocking on your door trying to sell you the copy? Come on. Oh, <laughs> I mean, no, somebody <laughs> comes knocking on my website trying to sell me. <laughs> <laughs> same almost the same thing yeah <laughs> bob does the same thing yeah. you guys I, I had so when i went out to california i i drove over to tom's and what his view yeah and so i don't know john looks like he's in his kitchen um bob Noy is in the everglades norm i don't know anyways and in my anyway, room Oh, you're in your room. Okay, I didn't see your room. But That's anyway, what, what you guys... Interrupt. I, I have to interrupt. Fred Lawrence is coming on. Hey. What you don't see is that if you looked out of Tom's window, you can see the beautiful Pacific Ocean. It, it just, he's kind of high up on a hill 
and there are some apartments below him and some strip malls. But if you look carefully, you see the gorgeous Pacific Ocean. And so um, today it's it, it was. Yeah. Now, are you in your bedroom? Or... Yeah, I'm in my bedroom. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Fred. Hi. Hey, Fred. Hi, Fred. I'm Hi. Sending in my grades. Hi. Hi, Fred. Great to Hello. see you. Where's Frank? He yeah, just had a doctor. Oh. He does he does what 80 year olds do. He goes to the doctor once or twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, so far I've been saved from that. <laughs> Good for you. So if I may, one of the things I took away from the um loss of Kathy, my ex was how much she detested Pope Francis and essentially and, and verbally she said he's such a damn socialist and my sister said well wasn't Jesus a socialist I'm not too worried about it and I thought there's a keeper I'm going to hold on to that one mm -hmm. because People with this arch conservative political view use it in that negative attitude. Who's that uh, Texas? Is it a cardinal who's oh, Strickland? Strickland? Yeah. Not a cardinal. But is oh, okay. But isn't <laughs> their political status part of why they are so against Pope Francis? who to me is Christ-like. And socialist is okay in that. That's from my point of view. I think that as a former political science professor, I think the word socialism has taken on a meaning that who speaks the word, they can have any idea what it means. But, um, and so I, I would go on to get into it. I, I would question what you mean by Jesus being a socialist, but um, that that's maybe for another conversation. But um, yeah, I don't know that Jesus was a socialist, to be honest. Well, but I, I think it's wrong to I think it's wrong to equate Catholic social teachings with socialism. Absolutely correct, Fred. I agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Very much so. In some ways, it's one of those loaded words. Uh, 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 I guess I've heard the expression weasel words that <laughs> tends to be thrown out to mean whatever the hell I want it to mean. And it's, and it's, <laughs> it's always, usually negative. It's always, it's always negative. It's, all, it's, yeah. it's always negative. Yeah. Yeah. Like, always what, the negative. Hell, what exactly does woke mean? Oh jeez! You know, it's it's, it's thrown out as ammunition, <laughs> but you know, I haven't found anybody capable of actually defining that word "woke" that they are objecting to. Uh, they object to a lot of people who hold, you know, who hold the equality of human beings, but and they call that wokeism. I don't know what the hell that means. It's because they're not awake. <laughs> they're woke, but not awake. <laughs> well, somebody could woke them up. <laughs> anyway. The Jesuits had, a, had an article, at least one article on wokeism and how it, it was an appropriate uh, word with an appropriate meaning that had a very positive uh, um, meaning and, and uh, ought to be understood as such and accepted and not you know, create such division. And, uh, um, you know, was that the Jesuits or was that just the article of, I mean, the uh, uh, author of the article? Who knows? Yeah, it is. America is a Jesuit magazine. Yeah, it is. I, I know. Um, but um, that word has been thrown at me, <laughs> I'm woke, and therefore I'm a horrible person. <laughs> I, I've never said I'm woke. I, you know, I just try to keep my ears and eyes open. And... I just looked, 
just looked it up in um, Wikipedia, and it says it's an adjective derived from African American vernacular English, meaning alert, and this is in quotes, alert to racial prejudice and discrimination. Awake to. Our friend George was woke. Yeah, he sure was. <laughs> And I'm with him. I'm on his side. <laughs> Amen. So I would, do, do you guys, you know, when, when you have the death of, of a friend or a family member. Can you talk to Susanna a minute? Yeah. Do, cool. do, you, do you ever let your mind wander as to what experience they are having at this time? Like, I, I, I was thinking about that because George has been dead now, what, 11 yeah. days? Be, I'm Just, almost done. Yeah. No, maybe more. Is wouldn't you wouldn't you love that he could get on this Zoom call as we're ending up and say, "Hey guys, you know this." Unlike Teddy Howard's grandmother Ned story about there ain't nothing there. If George can say, "You guys, you wouldn't fucking believe how great this is," and that would be George's words, probably. You know. Um, <laughs> I I just I remember when my dad died. I kept hoping, "Hey, Dad, let me know what is it like. What is it like? What is it like?" And I had a dear friend of mine who died about ten years ago that I'd known since kindergarten, about as long as Norm and Barney Gatlin have known each other. And as as he was dying, I said, "I have one last wish." And he said, "I know what it's going to be, Almy. You want me to find your dad and your mom and say how are things going?" And I said, yeah, I would like that. And let me know. I have not yet heard from Dave. I, I have no idea what, if they, you know. But I think that would be the most terrific gift. The most terrific <clears throat> gift that someone could give is to say, okay, guys, it is wonderful. You know, it is wonderful. Yeah. Every, um, every single day since he's been dead, uh, I've four or five a times. Week ago, George, so tell me, George, tell me. What's going on? What are you doing? How is it? You know, talk to me. <laughs> and it after after that, week, it's a week ago today. <laughs> after is. that, Nova, that is. you're right. After yeah. that Nova program on Wednesday, uh, Tim, I'm not so sure he wasn't here on one level. On another level, if I believe in the communion of saints, and I do. Yep. He's here. He's here with us now. He's been part of this conversation. And and his voice has been echoing in our hearts, which is connected to God's heart. And uh, just because we, we don't actually hear the words, he's here. So you think the, you and, think the, and you isn't think it interesting that modern science is beginning to ask that same sort of question? So that this great convergence is happening, even as we have these sessions together in the quote the larger world. I think that what Ned has been going through. I mean, first of all, let me make another. If you if you guys ever want to define what a dear friend is, you just need to look at. Ned Shavera. I mean, Ned Shavera was to George Crook, in my opinion, the definition of a true, true friend. So, Ned, kudos to you. Amen. The other, Amen. the other thing I believe is that, and a priest friend of mine told me this years ago: when a thought comes into your mind, and so Ned, as as you have these thoughts about George, I think those are motivated by the Holy Spirit. I I think I. And maybe it doesn't make theological sense, but I think these impulses that we have to think of somebody else, either living or dead, I think those are messages from the Spirit. There's a reason that you have that. We have these things in our minds. It's, it's not just like neurons activating your brain. I think those things are being activated by the Holy Spirit. At least that would be my prayer that that kind of stuff is. And so, Ned, I think he is communicating with you. And I think you're right. Guy. Of course. I, I think he's communicating with you, Tim. Yeah. Through Ned. Yeah. Yes. 
you know, be satisfied with what you've got. <laughs> I am. You've got Ned as a as a sacrament of George Crook telling you how fucking great it is. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> That, what a what a what a great what a great summary and maybe a great prayer to end on. Uh, uh, not to you guys are just you guys are just anything. off. Of it. I mean, I hope that no one. I hope that people, you guys, protect the sanctity of these videos. Because Amos, come here. Amos. Hey, hey, George is talking. George is talking. George is talking through Amos. <laughs> to talk to Amos and, and Amos understands in the ways that we don't. <laughs> yeah. Been a good session, guys. Yeah, really. Um, yeah, I think Ned, Ned, bring us home with the prayer for George. Oh, he's, he's, um, yeah. Uh, could, 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 could I ask so, could I ask one last thing before Ned you go you go ahead with yes, the yes, yes, of course. Um Fred has just joined us, and I'd like you to give us something of a parting thought, and then we'll go into the prayer. Fred, you have anything to say to us after grading all of those papers? <laughs> God's talking to you through the paper. Don't become a teacher. That's what I'm saying. Uh, the thing is, I don't just grade them, but I correct them. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And, and, uh, that takes an awful lot of time, oh boy. but I'm I'm uh, I I would just say that my my theme for the theology course was was that I've been talking about this a lot because it's a wide open expression. It comes from Aristotle. It's a phrase called uh, it's a ta henica. It's that for the sake of which you decide and do everything. And my my basic line is, it's supposed to be God, and if it's not God, it's an idol. And and I I, I but I thought it was a it was a wide open way of thinking, and I I had the people kids write their thirty eight kids write their final papers about it. What was there? Uh, that for the sake of which they decide and do everything. And um, many of them, uh, I would say, every one of every one of the students, either said it was it was God, or it was their family, and other people. So I was happy with that answer. What level? Because, they, what what level are these kids? Are they graduates? Oh, they're or? oh they're every year. Uh, oh, really? It's, it's oh. a uh, it's a required course, so you have people are get who are getting the credit out of the way, and um, uh, and and by and large, I find that they're they're um, they're really they're really happy with the way I teach it, and and. Um, um and 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 some of them really mean that they think that their life has changed because of what i taught them so uh i i uh tim was talking about the gift of the holy spirit and i always pray like we used to do in the seminary to the holy spirit before i teach these kids and i Hope to heck I am in some sense following his impulses or her impulses or its impulses uh, when I teach, and uh, and uh, and I, I'm I'm very grateful when they uh, they respond so positively. Big blessing. Amen. So that's that's pretty much it Amen. for me. Thank you, Fred. Good call, Tom. Thank you for that. Well, that's a prayer in itself. Amen. Still this rank, uh, Fred. Um, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As uh, 
as you told us again, as you tell us every day, praise the Lord. Praise him in the heights. Praise him in the heavens. For this wonderful brotherhood that you've given us. This presence that you've given us of yourself through all of these minds and hearts. Particularly today, we thank you for George. His smile, his colorful language, <laughs> his, uh, his unorthodoxy. Um, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father in heaven. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. For an hour. Amen. 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 Luke, will, I talk to the lady and she'll let you sit down. <laughs> I, it's, time, it's time for a Negroni. Time for a Negroni. That's right. That, <laughs> the, uh, that movie clip was marvelous, Tim. Oh, thank good. You. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay. Goodbye, guys. See you next Bye. week. God bless. Bye, guys. God bless. See you whenever.